How are you? Good, good. How are you? I'm good, yeah. How is it hot in Hyderabad? Uh, it's it's uh, comparatively cool. It's been raining. Oh, nice. Yeah. No, here yeah, we've been. It's been threatening to rain, but it's not raining. Clouds just come and then they dissipate. So it's warm. Yeah, it's humid also. Uh, very humid. So as long as you're at, you're at home, it's good. But the minute you step out, it's like really uncomfortable. Yeah, that's so true. Arshina's awake today. Yeah, frogs came out very well. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> Hello. Birds. Hi. Hey. Hey. Yeah. Awake Hi, today. <laughs> I slept and I just woke up. Oh my God. Hi, Ritika. Hi, Ritika. Yeah. How was your trip, Arshina? Very nice, yeah. We were lucky that uh, the weather was good. Oh, good. We went to Rajasthan. <laughs> summer oh, mein Rajasthan. Nice. Yeah, I know. Summer mein Rajasthan. <laughs> but the weather was very nice. We went to Udaipur. Wow, it's a oh. beautiful city. Yeah. Yeah, weather is very pleasant in north as of now. So, we, we, we are not like the May used to be. We haven't even used the fans properly till May. Yeah, wow. that's what... They were lucky that way. Yeah. Ah. Hi. Hi, good Hi, morning. Ruthie. Good morning. So Rajasthan was cool, you're saying, Varsha? Yeah, it was cool. Uh, it's more like a hill station and all. We we're feeling so cold. We didn't carry any sweaters. <laughs> that was okay. a bad thing. Wonderful. This is... Uh, a fun debate that I have with people when they say climate change uh, you don't know whether nobody specifies whether change is for the better or for worse uh, so maybe we, are, mm. we might just have good uh, temperature and cold summers <laughs> but, but there's always a I mean, pros and cons right the farmers always suffer so I heard yeah. from uh, uh, those um, local people, you know, that the harvest is ready, but because of rains and all, uh, the farmers are suffering. Yeah. Yeah. It's always like, there. Unsafe. Yeah. Like in North, so Punjab would have harvested all of the wheat. So now it's yeah. hard for them to store it and then, you know, uh, yeah. so they want to quickly get it done. Otherwise, it will get rot because of the rains. That's mm -hmm. true. That's true. Yeah. Here also, I think the mango crops have all been affected because of the rain. Yeah. And seasonal rain. Always happens. So I've Hi, shared, I've shared uh, pictures with you, but they are for next week, really. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. I, they look in, scary. <laughs> in my head, I have gone a week ahead with your batch. So this week, all batches are doing different stuff. And I got so confused. So I shared uh, preemptively <laughs> and then I realized that the last class we did was, um, we did, we were still doing nature. No? We have not done portraiture. Have we done portraiture? We haven't started. So we no, still no, we did. Do, so we still have to do part one of portraiture. Sure. All right. Never mind. We'll use these uh, next week. Uh, Ma'am, I wanted to ask a question. Yeah. The recorded sessions aren't on YouTube. Uh, so where can we watch them if you wanted to watch? They are on YouTube. I didn't see them. I couldn't see them. They are on. Um, uh, had I not shared the link for the for the playlist? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Because they are being watched by other people. I'll share the playlist with you because it's public. Anyone can watch. You can share the link and you can watch it. Okay. So let's. I'll I'll share. Okay, so let's start with portraiture part one today. We've done portraiture. I think all of you have done this bit 
several times uh, in the past couple of years now. But um, there's still some kind of fear about portrait. So I wanted to address it from the fear side and how we can dispel some of your inhibitions or anxiety about portraiture and create a new starting point for learning portraiture. Um, so um, who, who is new? Nobody of the new people today, no? Everyone has gone through stuff that we've done in the past. Yeah, okay. So today I want to do a, a free uh, illustration exercise. And maybe in this case, you might be able to also build your own understanding of ho how portraiture or depiction of a face works. Now, um, if you just objectively analyze this, you will notice that um, a portrait is nothing, it's really no different from drawing a picture of anything else. Uh, we just, one second. We just need a higher degree of accuracy because our brains and our eyes are so fine-tuned to recognize even the slightest differences in faces. So if we break this down further, what are the slight, slightest differences? Uh, and it comes right back down to those three or four factors that we talk about. Um, we have uh, the shape, shape of the different features, size of the different features, proportions, so relative proportionate sizes of the different features, and placement. There's really nothing other than this, and we are not bringing in color because that is the, that's actually the number one thing. You can first tell color, and then you can start telling these details. So color is very obvious. But other than that, what are the differences? So, um, I suspect if you can imagine from an alien's point of view, if somebody who doesn't know the human race has not lived and evolved over here, to them, all of us should look the same. Like all tomatoes look the same to us, but each tomato is different, right? But to us, it doesn't matter. We've not evolved to survive tomatoes or uh, bond with them or clan up with them. So the requirement of Facial recognition for us has been very specific. So if we bring this down, all we have to do is make our line strong enough to be able to draw these shapes accurately in the right size, put them in the right proportion, in the right place. That's all we're trying to do. So when you're uh, addressing portraiture, don't look at it as a face at all. Look at it only as shapes, only as shadows, <clears throat> dark and light sections or sections where you have to make a certain texture, which is exactly what we've done for travel illustration, food illustration. We've, we've tried to remove the whole mask of identity and go to just its shape. So today I want to want us to just play with these shapes on the one hand, and try to see how even with the simplest of shapes, we can communicate different kinds of identities of uh, a face. And on the other hand, developing the skill to draw a predictable line in which we are going to sketch a number of faces, put the features all together, and then also paint them. So that's how our approach is going to be today. The other thing we are going to do is also attack our own inhibitions and our own expectations. Uh, today, we are not going to be able to draw like Leonardo da Vinci. So let's put that aside. Um, what else are we not going to be able to do today? We are not going to be able to make our proportions accurate. So don't expect that. Our shapes are not going to be symmetrical. Don't expect that. Our sizes, we don't even know whether our sizes are going to be right or wrong or whatever. So don't expect that. So identify the things that you are not expecting. That is not part. What do we do want? We want our line to move across the paper very confidently. The line has to 
be so convincing that even if you are drawing a goat, it should look like a human. That is the power of confident line. That is what we are hoping to do. So focus on making the line very confident. Don't stop. Don't hesitate. Don't uh, doubt yourself. And whatever comes out will come out. Sooner or later, that very line, as it becomes confident, will start moving more consciously so that your features start becoming more recognizable and more in your control. And this process is so automatic, I can't even tell you. Before, So in my own experience, after years of consciously trying to make my line do what it was doing, one day I woke up and it just did it. So I, I can't explain how it happens. It's just things just fall into place together. So we have to just keep making those lines. So in yoga, our teacher does this one exercise with us. When we are doing inverted poses or poses that require us to balance in very precarious positions, she... Um, she makes us do something called a fallback. So we have a lot of cushions and uh, mattresses and we may do a, a handstand and then we have some bolsters in the way and then we bend our legs and fall back. We keep doing that. So in our, our brain starts getting used to the idea of toppling over, which is a big fear when you're, um, when you're doing anything acrobatic. What if I fall? What if I break something? So the anxiety makes you make errors in your asan. So there's a once a month routine where she says, okay, today everybody's going to do fall back. Once you have no fear of falling back, you have no fear once you've done it, then it starts becoming easier for you to challenge yourself and actually explore what you need to explore when you want to learn a subject thoroughly. So today's exercise is going to be all about the fallback. The more uh, ridiculous stuff you do, the better it is. Consider that one fallback. If your lines are looking funny, that's another fallback. If the proportions are looking wonky, that's another fallback. This are, these are all the ways in which you are going to examine how your brain is working, how your eyes are working, and how confident your line is getting. All right? So we are going to start off directly with pen. Don't even bother with a pencil. I think all of today we can do pen work because then there is a, there's no a chance of doubting yourself. Jo hai, so hai. And you have to just like it. Like uh, 200 years ago when they used to do arranged marriages, the boy and girl would meet only on uh, at the wedding pandal. Jo hai, wo hai. That kind. You don't get to choose anything. Okay, so let's start with the most familiar and the easiest facial uh, depictions, which is the emoji. Now we've become so familiar with the emoji and we are literally doing conversation with these, uh, using these pictures, pictograms. In a way, we've gone back to before language. Do you realize this? Like, uh, we are no better than Egyptians using our own form of hieroglyphs. So if we start off with just three circles, And in this, we have to just draw three more lines or two dots in a line. You all will be able to do it. Just place them in a particular position and they become one or the other emotion. With such little effort, you can... Um, communicate emotion and that which is making it happen is shapes.
It's the shape of the eyes, shape of the mouth that is making us show emotion. Then, if we make some more, let's play with sizes now. Suppose you make something like this. And then you make something like this, a big eye. So in this, we have changed the sizes or let's say proportions a little bit. And what you can tell from here is possibly age. So amongst these three, which one do you think is the uh, youngest phase, the youth-like phase, and the older phase? So if I say one, two, three, one, two, three, which would be the youngest face, like a child's face. Can you see that? If you can't see it, don't guess. Okay. So a child's face, how many people say three, third? Okay. Let the girl. Okay. I think the second two. one. Yeah, two. Two is a child's face. Okay. Can you see that there is a difference between the two? Yeah. Would you say that the difference might be age? Because there's nothing else. So you have age, gender, you have emotion, you have other identities like ethnicity or whatever. We can't tell gender here. We can't tell. Well, emotion is all the same. So here it's age, which is shown because of shape and proportion. Now let's try placement. So we have the same oval. This time we're going to add one more factor. So let's make two eyes and a mouth in the center and we're going to make two ears. Then let's make two eyes and the mouth up and ears here. And two eyes and a mouth and ears over here. So it's the same thing, but we have changed the position. With this now, we can see front. Up and down. Isn't it strange? It's just how you position these and suddenly you can see all sorts of direction. So we get, uh, let's call it direction. We get that from placement. So these explorations help us in um, just becoming familiar with how faces are seen by our brain. Now let's try changing some more shapes and proportions and add some works to it. Now here if we have Eyes, let's add a nose and a mouth. Eyes, nose and mouth. Eyes, small nose and mouth. So we've changed the placement of a few of the features, proportions of a few of the features. Now let's add some accessories. But even with accessories, 
Suppose we our starting point is exactly the same. They could all be women at this point until we add some other stuff. So you can add Hopefully, this won't be a woman. Though I have seen many a hairy upper lip. And this could also be just a hippie. So, with this, you can tell gender. Now, suppose we take this and make a cute graphic for ourselves. Let's see. This is one graphic that I have made several times. I absolutely love to make it. And it's great time pass. Make a rectangle, just about so much. And in this, we're going to make a particular type of face shape and add some kind of accessories to it. So let's start from the bottom and go to the top. Now, knowing that we have to make hair and uh, other facial features, start with the ears and uh, bottom of the face and draw the features somewhere over here. You don't have to draw the nose. And now we can draw different kinds of Hair. So let's start with what we've done before. And this hair now can come down like this. Let's make another one. It helps to make the features first. I can also do this smile. And here now you can have this kind of hairline. This. So very clean lines and you will be able to create interesting faces. Now, the reason why we start off at the bottom is because this these are uh, faces in the foreground and everything in the middle ground and the background will be uh, overlapped by this. They will be under these elements. So if you're making anything below the faces you've made, like I've just made over here, don't overlap it. I mean, if you do, it's fine. What can I say? We're doing art after all, not physics. You can draw necks on these and just draw a nice, maybe just on the people in the foreground, you can draw a nice t-shirt and jeans really long hands. Is the light a little better now? Because I wasn't able to see Okay. So every place, this is what we can do. And you can also experiment with maybe a squarer jaw. It's all, after all, uh, about shapes. 
make the eyes maybe slightly higher. This guy could just actually have, he looks like one youthful kid, right? You could also make interesting things like these where you can have uh, like teenage haircuts where you don't see the eyes. This was my mother's perpetual nightmare. How any mother's nightmare when their daughters insist on having a fringe, whether it suits them or not, I've been there, I've done it. So naturally it was going to be done to me by my daughters as well. And then the hair is in your eyes and then you're trying to be very stylish. And then your mother is saying, move that hair, wear a hairband, wear a clip. I remember my mom loved it and we had to have it. Oh, yeah, sadhana cut. But I remember you had much silkier hair. Mine was a bush, still is. So a fringe needs a lot of work to maintain a fringe. Otherwise, it just looks like. Uh, I don't know. It looks like some. Puffed up. Huh? <laughs> it looks like some puffed up. Like I have also frizzy hair. So whenever I come out of the shower, though I have applied conditioner, like I like every day, like when I wash my hair, it still looks like some balloon. It frizzes yeah, up. it looks very, very unattractive. It's so dry, and I'm trying to think. It looks like uh, oh. Like that, that metal thing you wash button with, like that. Yeah, that is how it looks. Or like the chihuahua, like hair there, like puffed up. Not chihuahua. There's some dog, if I'm not wrong. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. I think chow yeah. chow, if I'm not wrong. It does look. Like, there are lots of dogs who have hair like that. Okay, so once you are comfortable with just making these shapes, because it just takes. A little while to get used to drawing the face without drawing the whole circle. Then we can do some more shapes for the head. Um, so you can do things like um, something like this. And then also for the mouth, we can explore different shapes. We've just been making a simple mouth like that. But you can make a mouth like this and add some lines on the side. Then you can make a mouth with slightly less curved. And you can put lips like these. So these are like the Archie comics lips. Very cute. Then you can also have very voluptuous lips like these. You can have lips which are fat on top, thin at the bottom. You can have lips that are thin and shapely on top and fat at the bottom. What we do not want are lips like these for now. There's nothing wrong with them, but avoidable for now. And even worse are when some books have taught lips to be made like that. 
It's ridiculous. I don't know who makes them, but let's try the softer shapes right now. Now, when it comes to men's faces, you can make, if you make lips like these, though they have lips, poor fellows start looking very effeminate. So you can make a mouth like that and just give a small line at the bottom to indicate uh, a shadow underneath the lower lip. That's good enough. And many a time their upper lip is fuzzy. So we don't really need to draw it, but there could be a mustache or you could draw some stubble and that does the trick. So all these shapes that we are doing right now are part of that fallback exercise. Here we have no liabilities. Though it may seem like there are some faces which look like people you know, that's only because of some kind of pareidolia. But uh, otherwise, they can look as funny and uh, crazy as they want. And uh, you don't have to feel bad about it. You don't have to feel judged or uh, in, at the very least even try to defend yourself because this is all supposed to be fun. You can also experiment over here. Like for example, all these necks are very thin. What if I make a really nice fat neck? What does that look like? Suddenly, with these kind of experiments, you can see different things happening. Now, even if it's a fat leg, what if I make a... Oh, actually, I could just make a round. Eyes slightly wide apart. Um, and maybe just give him a stubble on his head. And mustache. Something like that. What does it look like? This lady, I could do some lips like this. So as we are progressing, our faces are becoming a little more um, sophisticated. So now we've got straight hair, curly hair. We can have, what kind of parting can we have? We could have things like these, like a Parin Babi hairstyle. But do we need to have it look normal? How about, like this one is quite interesting. So we could do hair that is uh, just around like that. And we could probably put some um, bows, maybe. We could also make um, some hairstyles like these. I think this is a very German or uh, European, West European style.
And we could also put some accessories on these faces. So how about making glasses? If we give her really big lips, then she can be like a Kardashian. And uh, what else can we do? We could have, yeah, she could be like a 70s hippie. I'm so biased towards the hippie look. I just love it. Also, you can then give her some of those accessories. So maybe big beads, beaded necklace. Okay, so we got, yeah, this is going to be Perry and Bobby, but she is not. But this is definitely Zena the Moon. Now, with all these texture uh, faces that we've made, we can add texture to this. This is the fun bit. So the texture does two things. It starts blocking space. So you start seeing real sizes and proportions. And second is that making those tiny lines also helps in uh, strengthening your own hand. But remember that these lines have to be made very carefully. So the attempt is not to fill up space as much as break up space into even sections. So when you're making this hair, if you just do a quick fill up job, uh, it's not going to help your line for sure. But if you try to do it very slowly and make all these lines even, it looks very mesmerizing. And that kind of control is very important to be able to draw long span lines and other features with... Uh, you being in charge and not the pen. Now, like I said, don't judge your uh, work. Just uh, see how it looks with whatever choices you make for it. There are many ways in which we can fill up different textures, but you chose one thing like that. Now, once you've chosen a texture, it doesn't mean that all hair must have the same texture. This one obviously is going to have a spiral texture because this, uh, the outline or the silhouette of the hair seems to lend itself better to a spiral look. So I was invited to make this um, graphic at an IT company which wanted to depict diversity. And this was a ready graphic which I had made several years before that and they loved it so much. They said, just come and make a mural in our office.
Okay, so this can be continued. You're, you can just build up on this and make it bigger and bigger. And also, some you might just get ideas from uh, people that you see around you. Suddenly, once you start making this and leave it unfinished, you will start noticing hairlines or maybe you can notice uh, a certain quirk in somebody's face, maybe a very peculiar mustache <coughs> or maybe a mole and you want to add all of that. So moving to the next part, let's now develop the face a little more and let's draw a few uh, facial features. But we're going to draw them like, imagine a four-year-old would. So let's draw a face. So just draw any shape. Don't look at making it perfect. These are all fallback exercises. So you get a face that is not completely square or you get this kind of a line that is not joining. Fine. Now, somewhere in the middle, we are going to draw two almond-shaped eyes. All of you know this. So just draw two almond-shaped eyes. In that, we will draw a circle. In the middle of this, draw a nose. How do we draw a nose? Normally, it's just a flat line. But this time around, let's draw a nose that's like that. The nose that I normally tell you not to draw. Then let's draw eyebrows. Maybe we can also draw a nose like that. And then we'll draw mouths. Any of the mouths that we've drawn before are fine. Then we have ears. Maybe draw a fold of the eye. And some hair. Okay, now let's try drawing this face like we have drawn these faces. So we have shape of the face. Eyes. Nose. Mouth. Ears, hair. We have the shapes. What we can manipulate will be the shape, size, proportion, and placement. So let's try playing with these a little bit. And we're going to make six different faces over here where you are going to play with these shapes. So I've made a face like this. I've made very flat almond-shaped eyes. My nose is going to be like that. Flat eyebrows and a mouth that's like this. And maybe just hair like that. Just want to make a scratchy hair like this. Maybe I want to also add extra lines like that. Maybe something like this. Next. Let's 
So maybe I want to draw the nose like that. So the order obviously does not have to be the same. You can draw anything in whatever order you want. You can start with the eyes, start with the nose or the head shape, however you like it. So this is meant to be a very freeing exercise. So that's why I asked you to use your ballpoint pens. Don't use your micron tip pens. Because a micron tip pen, you will not be able to do all these scratchy things. You have to be very careful. Ideally, don't do any scratchy stuff with that. So deliberately try and make shapes that are even asymmetrical and maybe not even the same uh, here they're completely different eyes also these are all our fears no what if my eyes don't come accurate and because we are so afraid of these things we don't land up having fun when making illustration. This is hilarious. I love this face. I would not have been able to make this even if I had wanted it. In fact, I know somebody who looks like that. Now, here's another thing you can try. Try drawing these in a continuous line.
Okay, now here's something that I'm trying out. Drawing really small eyes. So here now, size is going to take over. How do small eyes look? Because everything else has got big eyes. Now small eyes, big nose, and perhaps a small mouth. This person could almost look Chinese. One last one. We can have small eyes. I could also draw a nose that is really wide. But short, not too long. Maybe mouth that's this big. Oh my God, you know who this is looking like to me. If I could just give him a squarish head, this will look like Michael Caine. It's just because of the hair. Bro. Are you able to do this freely enough? Good. So, do you see how that fallback idea is working? Have you come across certain shapes that you feel, uh, yeah, this is me, I do this all the time, but if this is what is expected, this is not a problem. So, do you feel at ease making all these funny faces? I feel like I do this during my lectures. Like, if I had a you know strong dislike towards the teacher well I like you know I keep on like exaggerating their facial features you know like for example if I had a big nose I'd like extend the nose and make yeah. them look like a monkey yeah that's where caricatures come from just make I think they the first person who made them was probably hating on somebody really big <laughs> how else do you express your uh, dislike politely all right so now the next exercise we're going to do um is going to be it's going to be like a fun game we are going to draw or rather make these portraits directly in paint oh, one second. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we're going to do this directly in paint and I'm not there to check on whether or not you'll do it in paint, but don't cheat through this. We're going to make three quick portraits from photographs. I'm going to show you how to make the first face. You don't have to make it. You just have to watch it. Then I'm going to show you the face after I have made it so that you can see how I have translated elements from a photograph into 
uh, the painting. And then I will give you the option to choose a face for yourself, which you will then paint the way I have painted it. So the second face, I will we will paint together, but you will know what you're painting. And the third face, you choose your own and you will paint it yourself. Okay, just give me a minute. Just not get my tools. Okay, so since you have to look for pictures, look for some quirky faces. Uh, I'm looking for some, which I will paint myself. But in the meantime, you can also look for some for yourselves. So we need faces that are looking to the front. Right, I found one. Now you don't know what the face looks like. You have to just see me make this. I'm not gonna make it too large. I'm just gonna make it about this big so that we can fit two more faces over here. Because this is going to be a fun game exercise, I am going to start making the face with orange. The lines are very smooth and I'm drawing them with the tip of my brush. Now we've drawn a lot of eyes and noses, so we should be able to make these. Changing my color to cobalt blue. And also the brush stroke is very brief. And then I'm going to make very brief strokes again for the hair.
Now on this, I am going to do a spatter. Now I can add a lot of more colors if I want in this. It may be a little bit of red, all that. But a, a quick five minute sketch off, I'll show you which person this is. Okay, can you see how this works? So now I'm going to select a picture that all of us are going to make, but I'm going to show you the image first. I'll share it with you and then we can make it together. And after that, you can look for a picture for yourselves and you can make that. Oh, now all these pictures are looking to the side, sorry. So when you want to practice a portrait like this, look for a picture which has something distinctive, either hair or freckles or wearing a hat, um, something that will grab attention. Let's go with this. Okay, now this one, if you want, you can keep, you can look at the image also and you can follow my instructions. So you know how I am translating this, but this is just so that you get an idea of how one, there's one way of doing it, but you're free to invent your own. Now the color choices I leave to you, choose whichever one you like. I'm using blue and I like to start with marking the edge of the face. Now for the nose, I'm just making a straight line and something like this. One side eyebrow is connected, the other one is not. Now we can make the same kind of shapes that we've made earlier, or if you feel more confident, you can try to make a shape that looks more like the model's eyes. I think everyone knows how to make that highlight in the eye. So at least make that because that suddenly makes the face look much more believable. And then at some point, now don't worry about proportions here. At some point, make the shape that she's got a very shapely mouth. So don't make it flat. Because here now we are trying to create the likeness of somebody. So whatever shapes we can make, we will make. And as for the hair, so dramatic, I love it. You can actually just make a shape. And because it's an illustration, you can make it even more dramatic if that is possible. So in this, we can put a whole lot of color.
And in fact, if you're up to it, you could also make something like a, um, like the illustration of a galaxy or something inside that hair because it's just begging for some drama. Now in this, we can also add a little more fun by giving her an exaggerated rouge. She already has that. Or maybe make it brown, like Japanese artwork. And Again, if you're if you're up to it, you can expand on this. How's it looking, everyone? Are you getting it? Ah, nice. So nice. Very nice. Ritika's is looking good. Archana's is looking good. Very nice. Okay, now it's your turn. I want you to look for an image, uh, an interesting looking portrait that you can translate into color. Excuse me. Oh, let's see. I'm sharing some pictures in case you can't find any in time. Hmm. Alka is also looking good. Alka, you should add some contrasting color now to that.
The one that I've just shared with you is a lady looking to the side, but it's such a cute image. I thought maybe you could give it a go. Okay, if any of you have got color pencils, you can bring those out as well. And try to draw in color pencil and then paint. Or when you've made the painting, try to texturize it with color pencil. So with this exercise, you, uh, what all are you practicing? Try and uh, analyze that for yourself. Um, this one also includes color. So when we are doing color application and you get patches, sometimes those patches are uh, good to, uh, to create a certain effect. Are you able to see effects that are inadvertently being created? Uh, is your hand moving, flowing through over the paper? And um, are, the, are your lines coming strong? Whether or not your face looks like a face is not important. So, uh, Arjuna, I can see your hand moving. It's moving very tentatively. When you make a line, can you just make a one strong line and finish it off with that? Yeah, just make it. Yeah, correct. Don't be so tentative about this. And also make lines that are a little extended. Because right now you're making them like, if you're making this, you just make something like this, like that, like that. No, make it around. Make it again. That is, I need to get you to make more stronger lines. I'm done with mine. Can I show? Yeah, let's see. Uh, this was a reference. Okay. This was a stitch. The blue one. Very nice. One second. Let me just pin it. Excellent. 
Very nice. Very good line. Lovely. Can I see the earlier one also? Just move. Yeah. On. I think the earlier one looks okay. I think I messed up the eye. No, no. There's no messing up in this. This is... You have to just enjoy whatever has come out. There's no mess up. Very good. Thank you. Maybe I can show. I tried to do this one. Okay. And uh, it looks like this. Oh, so this looks like a caricature already. Very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Superb. So with this exercise, you can do all sorts of things now, all sorts of uh, explorations with different types of faces. And in fact, you might also be able to do side profiles or three-quarter profile. Maybe not expressions yet, but um, give it a go. Why not? Okay, I have one very expressive face over here. I'm going to share it on the group and I'm going to try to illustrate that. Oh, Shivani, wonderful. Very nice. Okay, so let me try this fellow. Let's see. So the sides of the faces are pretty much the same. But I have just one year over here. And the nose is pretty straight. One eyebrow is down. One eyebrow is up, one eye is closed, open. And the mouth is also top is straight and the bottom is sideways with teeth and tongue show. And in this guy's case, I think the fun bit would be the mustache. So I should show this with some flamboyance. It looks really weird.
okay where the prey hunt Okay, what's missing is it has no yeah, that's what's missing. Okay, let's see. Oh, how lovely, Susan. Wonderful. I love that lady in the glasses. She's so cute, no? Me. Imagine the potential with all these illustrations. Oh, very nice, Shivani. Look at that. This is adorable. Alka, yours also. So nice. These are amazing. Have, can you see how much likeness you've got to the actual person without even trying? Brilliant. Varsha, yours both are looking very nice. Awesome. So I can safely say that our fallback session has become very successful. So now there's no inhibitions about how bad it can go because even if it's really bad it's not that bad at all right so you don't have to worry about uh next week <laughs> when we'll take on the serious portraits okay all right any questions any um difficulties that you want to discuss Okay, so now through the week, try to do this. Fun. <laughs> it, it's a very fun exercise, yeah. So we have two things. We have two or three things, actually. We have this to complete. You can make more faces like that, which for which you need no references. It's just playing with shapes and sizes and proportion. And then the picture references. This is super fun. So you do, please try it and definitely try it with faces of celebrities. Don't try your family members yet. <laughs> Just warning. All right. I'll see you next week then. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Thanks. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.